Now I'm going to show you how to draw an orthographic. First of all, I'm using A4 paper, which is similar to 8.5 by 11. And this is a cube. I am always going to mark the corners of the paper so you know where the edges are. This cube has a square in the front, a square in the top side, and a square on the right side. So how do we draw this? First of all, draw a light horizontal line on the bottom. We're going to now draw a vertical line. And remember to rotate your paper. This should be approximately 90 degrees. It does not have to be exact. Remember, this is a sketch. Next thing to do is to draw an arc like that and to estimate the midpoint. And then draw a diagonal rotating the paper like that. So now we can actually draw the other edges. So for instance, I can do a top side where this intersects. I can then draw the right side. And this is an approximate square. And this is the B side. How do we draw the right side? Well, you rotate the paper. You draw a vertical, another diagonal that's approximate. And it doesn't have to be exact. Notice that it's not exactly there. I kind of moved it a little bit. And then I'm going to draw the other diagonals. It's very important that you draw diagonals because that helps you subdivide your squares. And we're going to do that often with sketching. The top view is draw another horizontal line, a diagonal, a horizontal line. Make sure you rotate your paper. All right, so this is B. This side is D. And this side is C. Now what I want to do is to darken the edges of the cube. I rotate the paper. Notice how I hold the pencil like a dart. And I just darken it like that. It does not have to be perfect. In fact, you don't want a perfect drawing. And it's not even possible to draw a perfect drawing. So what we have now are, is a set of three orthographic views of a cube. We have the front, we have the side, and we have the top. All right, now I'm going to show you some examples of orthographic drawings that I have done. Here's a drawing of the spout for a wine box. Notice that this is the front, this is the right side, and this is the top. This has two of the characteristics that I had talked about. This has the same scale along the X, the Y, and then also the Z axes. And it also has true shape. But it does not have three dimensionality. It's very important to learn how to draw circles because many objects have circles. Let's go back to our cube. You see this is an engraved circle right there. We're going to draw that. This is how you draw a circle. Now, first of all, these are the corners of my paper. And let's just draw a big square in the center of the paper like this. OK? All right, notice it's not perfect. You don't have to be precise at the corners. You just want to make sure it has the approximate proportion. Now, let's divide this into four quadrants. Now, a circle is going to have four tangent points, here, here, there, and there. So I'm going to put four tangent points here. These are the points that the circle will overlap the edges of the square. And now here's what you do. 
you take each half of the diagonal and you estimate thirds and you mark them off. One third, two thirds, three thirds. You rotate the paper. One third, two thirds, three thirds. And you do the same thing. Now, the other four points are going to be on the short diagonals. Here, there, there. But not exactly. Because this dimension, mathematically, is point. 707, which is not two-thirds, but it is close. Now here's how we're going to draw the arcs of the circle. What you do is you hold your pencil in a loose natural position like this and draw an arc like that. Now it's important that you rotate the paper and draw another arc and rotate the paper and draw another arc and rotate the paper and draw another arc. Now, that is a good approximation of a circle. Is it a perfect circle? Absolutely not. Now, so let's darken the circle. Now, what I'm going to do is, remember I started from here and went there? Now I'm going to rotate 45 degrees, and now I'm going to start here and go there. And what that does is that smooths out this transition between the two lines. It smooths out the transition. Like that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very good sketch of a circle. And if you practice enough, you can do that really well. You need to practice drawing circles. Let's do another example of a circle. another example of a circle. Let's do a set of orthographic drawings of our cube and let's draw now circles on the front, the top, and the side. What we have is a set of orthographic drawings of this cube, and you can see the outside is a square, the inside is a circle, this is B, the right side square and circle D, and the top is square and circle C. And these are freehand sketches, they're not perfect, in fact they should not be but they do represent a cube really well with engraved circles.